So, what is architecture? Right. Um, well, it's a, such a simple question, there is no possible simple answer probably to it, uh, and that's also not what you're expecting anyway. One thing I could come up with, and I, uh, um, you know, I, I travel a lot and I have a lot of projects in many different places, and, uh, and it's interesting how different uh, cities, places uh, deal with architecture. Yeah? and um, what the outcome is of that. So in the end I would say architecture has a lot to do with the image we have of ourselves and the social and psychological status of a society. So um, if, you look, if you go to China where a lot of people uh, live in very simple conditions and uh, a lot of people recently changed the status class-wise from being poor to, to being lower middle class and um, and they're very happy with these skyscrapers and these boxes they live in and to have an to have an elevator to go to your place uh, makes you feel incredibly important and I don't know so and uh, you know the the East Germans when they moved to the to the monoblocks to the Soviet monoblocks in Mazan to the east parts of the city the the reason they would move to these places is, is uh, because the warm the warme kam aus der Wand the wall would come out of the, of the wall, meaning that the hot water would automatically come out of the wall. So comfort seems to play also a, 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 an important role. So in the end, um, I think that architecture is a manifestation of the state of societies. In the moment in which they are, you can see very, very... I mean, you could diagnose the psychological, social uh, situation of a, of a society looking at, at, at the architecture it produces. So. And if you look here, for example, in, in Innsbruck, if you see all these little, over-motivated, far too small buildings, you know, you can see, like, too small space, too much ambitions, you know. So, and if you go to Berlin, you see all these kind of far too big, too little ambitions, you know, no quality, no... So, and in the end, as in Berlin, maybe, no experiment. You know, Berlin, Germany in general, but Berlin in special, has tried every single architectonical fashion. And they all failed, not only architectonically, also politically. They've been communists, fascists, you know, everything, nothing worked. So they're fed up with experimenting. So that's the reason if you talk about architecture in, Europe, in, in Germany, no experiment, forget it. Okay? So other places <clears throat> are more, that had more continuity and didn't have so many experiments going on and didn't ruin their space so much are more willing to do experiments maybe. So in the end, as I said, architecture is a manifestation, a stone manifestation of the social and psychological state of our society. What can architecture do? Mm, what can architecture do? Well, I mean, one must believe that one can do better places that can change the quality of life of people. If we wouldn't believe that, we wouldn't do that. I many times doubt so, because I have experienced people in, in really situations that I would have uh, um, thought to be bad, bad architecture. I've seen very happy people and, and dealing with that very, very good. And I've seen a very, very good architecture with very unhappy people in it. So I don't know really how much we can, um, we can um, change with what we do. Um, maybe in the end is like, um, uh, maybe in the end, instead of being so positivistic, it would be good to be a bit more fatalistic. You know? I mean, I don't know if we can really change the world, but we can do small, small differences. I think we can do, um, we can do things a little bit better, maybe not as much as we wish. I would say. I mean, we are not as powerful as we as we wish, probably. But uh, but there are differences, obviously. There are differences, and in the end, I think that. Um, uh, maybe the question should be much more what, what it should do, or what does it, is it the next one? No. Uh, uh, what architecture shouldn't do is maybe, um, you know, that the, when you start to be too self-confident of what you are doing is going to do things better, is when architecture goes really wrong, you know? I mean, look at this campus, for example, you know? It's an awful space. It's drafty, it's like... You know, it's empty at night, I don't know. And when it was done, it was probably the most modern thing to do. And everyone was convinced it's the right thing, it's sorted in its order. It's like, students are all together here, isn't that a wonderful idea? And probably it would be much better if all these institutes would be somewhere in the city, uh, in different places, and would mangle with the city instead of being separated. So, again, I think that if we look at the story of architecture, it's a story of failures. So, maybe the question should, shouldn't be what can we do, what, uh, the question should be what shouldn't we do, maybe. How do you position yourself within the discourse? 
Well, I like not to have to position myself, you know. I prefer to stay flexible when it comes. I don't think that I need to position myself and answer the questions of architecture are not so essentially easy to answer that I have to position. My position would be a very eclectic and very open one that says that uh, architecture should be in different contexts very different things. So there is no reason to to position yourself somewhere. I think in, in some cases a very uh, conservative attitude can be the right one. In other cases a completely experimental and crazy one could be the right one and uh, in another one something in between, etc. So in the end I think that um, we have to be more context driven uh, uh, and take situations in, the, in which we work more serious instead of just doing one thing because we think it's the one right thing to do everywhere. Because this is the big failure of the modern movement too. They just did the same stupid stuff everywhere around the world. Sometimes it works, most of the time it doesn't. <laughs> Are there any values that are important for you? Well, I think general values are, are important, like uh, ethical values that we all have uh, when it comes to... But one, one thing that I like to rescue uh, is the, um, the idea that if you, ha if you take a more fatalistic position and you're not... Uh, architects have the... Uh, or sometimes have make the mistake to be too positivistic, you know. Oh yeah, it's great, let's do that kind of position. And that creates a lot of stupid infantile infantilisms in architecture that then takes ages to get rid of. So my value would be, um, yeah, maybe uh, be careful with what you do, be careful with, with, uh, with what you do, and, uh, and, don't try, and don't try to avoid conflicts I mean, deal with conflicts instead of just painting them pink, you know, or, or you know, so, but deal with them, do something with the conflicts that appear when you work. I don't know if this is an answer to the last one, but it's a try. What is your design method? Uh, well, we apply a lot of methodologies also independent of where we work and in which context we work, with which people we collaborate, uh, who, which clients we have which city it is, which social context, built context, I don't know, which budget we have. There's so many questions that in the end um, I don't follow one methodology of design, but uh, I have a whole, a whole box full of different methodologies. And uh, so also we work very um, eclectic and, and, and try not to be driven by an ideology of how to do things right, but by, uh, by many different possibilities of dealing with different situations so that we don't have to put ourselves in a box and say that's what we are and we have to stick to that now.